Hello there. In today's video, we'll be comparing Walgreens Boots Alliance with CVS Health. This is a video that was requested on a previous comparison video I made, which was actually Pepsi versus Coke, and it was requested by Corvette Dude. So thank you for the request. Here it is. I hope this video is what you're hoping for. This is a straight out comparison video. I've done these kind of videos before. If you're familiar with this channel, you know I quite frequently compare one stock with another to work out which best, and this will be no different. What we're gonna be doing is we'll be looking at what the companies do, we'll look through the balance sheets, we'll look through the income statements, we'll look through the analyst forecasts, and we'll have various stages, and at each stage, I'll basically give a point to one or the other, and at the end, we'll get to see which one works out as the better investment based on the metrics that we're looking at here today. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name's Andy, and on this channel, I like to talk about money and success. If you're interested in making, saving, or investing money, please be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell, and then you'll get notified every time I release a new video. And if you enjoy this video and find it useful, please do remember to give it a thumbs up, because that helps the YouTube algorithm, which in turn helps me, and of course, I do appreciate it. Before we get started, I do need to let you know I'm not a financial advisor, so this is not financial advice. You need to do your own research and due diligence before investing in any stocks or shares. Don't just take my word for it. So what do these guys do? So Walgreens, Boots Alliance, and CVS are essentially pharmacies. So if you need some medicine, some medication, these are the places you'd go with your prescription to get that. But they're not just that. They also have stores as well. So they sell products. You don't, a lot of people will go in, they'll get the prescription, but then they will buy other things as well. So it's not just the one source of income. They're essentially, I would say like mini department stores for want of a better description. Now, I'll be quite honest with you, I am not exactly bullish on department stores. Here in the UK, we've had many of them closing down. The high streets are struggling. So that in itself on the whole business model concept, which is what I'm assessing in this particular phase, I, I don't actually count that as a particularly good thing. But that's, that said, these two companies are always linked together. And Lots of people always compare the two investors generally compare the two when looking at investments. So when something happens in the market related to pharmacy, you'll see that both would move similar in, in their share price. That's quite a common thing. And I'll, I'll show you an example of that in a moment. So this slide here shows our operating income, net earnings and earnings per share have literally been hammered in the last quarter of 2020 for Walgreens Boots Alliance. On the international side of things, they've got boots but the US is the main market. They do have, this is Walgreens Boots Alliance, do have overseas exposure, whereas CVS doesn't really. They're more just US focused, but they do have another string to the bow, which I'll cover in a moment. But one of the things I want to point out on this slide here, you can see, is they've had strong growth in boots.com. Sales are up 155%. I would put that down to the lockdowns with people being told to stay indoors, stay at home. People are ordering things more online. So it's nice to see they've managed to boost that, but. I would guess they're coming off a pretty low base in the first place. Now, I think this is an important slide to look at. The Transformational Cost Management Program. So this is a company that's really looking to cut costs. They've already closed 215 locations in the USA and they're aiming to close 250 stores. And in the UK, they've closed 138 and they're aiming to close 200 stores. So this is not a growing business in the respect of what they're rolling out more stores like you would think. You know, if, if the high streets were booming, they'd be pumping out and opening more stores. They're not doing that. They're looking at them going, hang on, these stores are making losses. Let's get rid of these particular stores. And that's what they're doing here. So they're not expanding in the traditional sense of what you would think. Their way of increasing their profits is by cutting their costs, literally by closing stores. That's what this slide tells me here, which I don't think is a particularly good sign. I'm not going to say it's terrible, but it's it's not good. And the reason I'm not saying it's terrible is because there are gonna be stores that will do well. I'll give you an example. Where I live, there's a Boots Pharmacy. Right next to it, there's a doctor's. If you go to that doctor's, you get your prescription, and they literally say to you, yeah, just pop in next door to the farms. And you do, because it's so convenient. You walk out the docks into the pharmacy to do that. Now then, the boots stores that are on a high street in the UK, for example, they're not going to be having that same effect because they don't have the doctors next door. So there's no reason to just pop in and get your prescription. Now, as I mentioned earlier, getting your prescription isn't really going to be making them uh, that much money. That's not all of their income. They also rely on you going and getting the prescription and then thinking, oh, I'll also buy that pair of glasses or I'll also buy that. And they, do you see what I mean? They have other products in the shop that supplement the sales, supplement the income or from the prescriptions and increase the overall income. So it's not just the, the pharmacy side of things that is the income, but the pharmacy brings a person in, then once a person is in the store, 
they will hopefully buy other things. That's the premise of the business model, as I see it, for Walgreens Boots Aligned. So let's have a look at this little November fact sheet here for CVS. As you can see, we are healthcare innovators. Again, they deliver a lot of prescriptions, 2.8 billion prescriptions fulfilled and managed. And one nice factor I see here is 70% of the US population lives within three miles of a CVS pharmacy. They have 1,100 walking medical clinics and 23.6 million medical benefit members. So let's do a little bit of history now. So Walgreens, big American pharmacy and store chain, okay? Now then they then go and buy Boots in 2014. In 2014, Boots is the big UK version, if you like, of Walgreens, hence Walgreens Boots Alliance. So they have that exposure over here in the UK, so international exposure if you're watching this from America. That was back in 2014. Following the Boots acquisition, they then attempted to buy Rite Aid. That didn't go to plan, but they did end up getting almost 2,000 Rite Aid stores. So they weren't able, Wal Walgreens Boots Alliance were not able to buy all of Rite Aid, but they could get 1,923 stores is what they got an extra from Rite Aid. So while Walgreens Boots Alliance were trying to expand the number of stores and expand that way, obviously the acquisition of Boots, the acquisition of a chunk of Rite Aid, certainly almost 2,000 stores, 1,923 Rite Aid stores, CVS took a different route. CVS acquired or merged with Atna. Now, what is Atna? Atna is a pharmacy benefit management company. So what does that mean? So in short, what a pharmacy benefit management company does is it agrees deals with the pharmacies or the drug companies for set prices to buy in volume on behalf of the insurance companies. Because in America, that's how health works. It's all done through insurance companies. So they negotiate a price. Now, what that means to Walgreens Boots Alliance or CVS is they would have had to accept a lower price per unit for the drug in order to sell a high quantity to the PBM that they have done the deal with. And obviously they do that because they want the volume even though they're getting it at a lower margin. Now that's where CVS have been smart by buying Aetna, which is one of the biggest pharmacy benefit management companies in the world. They have a slice of that pie as well. So the, the, the you know, because obviously that company makes a profit as well. So they get a benefit from that and they can do their own deals essentially. So I think that's a very, very smart move on the part of CVS Health. So just this week, we've seen a drop in the share price of both WBA and CVS and that's due to the Amazon Pharmacy announcement and launch. And as you can see here, they claim, we designed Amazon Pharmacy to put customers first, bringing Amazon's customer obsession to an industry that can be inconvenient and confusing. We work hard behind the scenes to handle complications seamlessly so anyone who needs a prescription can understand their options, place their order for the lowest available price, and I think that's key, and have their medication delivered quickly. And obviously Amazon have disrupted lots of industries, so this does not bode well for either Walgreens Boots Alliance or CVS. So I'm gonna give that round to CVS simply because I think diversifying, upline if you like, and acquiring Atna was a very smart move. I think that will help them hold onto their profit margins, whilst Walgreens Boot Alliance have expanded rapidly on the storefront. They now, as we can see, cutting some stores. Now, I don't want to hold that against them, but by the same token, they haven't got that added protection on their margins that CVS does by owning Atna, because what they lose on the CVS side, they gain on the Atna side by doing their own deals. And I think that's a very smart move on their part. This is the Walgreens Boots Alliance, or WBA chart. This is the one year chart. You can see there it started a year ago at $61.34 per share and it's currently standing at $37.52 per share. We've got a 52 week high of $61.41 and a 52 week low of $33.33. So it's currently 39% down from its 52 week high. It's got a forward P ratio of 7.79 and the current dividend yield is 4.98%. So here's the one year chart for CVS. As you can see, a year ago it was $74.92 per share and today it stands at $66.39 per share. It's got a 52 week high of $77.03 and a 52 week low of 
4 cents, which means it's currently 14% down from its 52 week high. The PE ratio on this one isn't quite as competitive at 8.94 and the dividend yield again isn't quite as high at 3.01%. So that round really has to go to Walgreens Boots Alliance. The PE ratio is better than that of CVS, so it's trading at a better value right now. The dividend yield is higher at 4.98%, making it more attractive than the 3.01% dividend yield of CVS. And the share price value, well, it's down 39% on its 52-week high versus CVS, which is down 13% on its 52-week high. So if it was to go back to its previous highs, it's got that much further to go up. And that's how I've priced that, that's how I do that. In all these comparison videos, that's how I'm doing it in this one. You may or may not agree with that analysis, but that's how we're judging it today. So that's why I've given that point to WBA as well. Green Boots Alliance income statement now. So if we look at the revenues line for the total revenues there, we can see it increased from 2016 to 2017, increased again in 2018, increased again in 2019, and it has increased again this year, which is obviously brilliant. If we then look at the operating income, we can see it was 6.4 billion because these numbers are in millions in 2016. It then fell in 2017 to 5.5 billion. It then rose back a little bit in 2018 to 6.1 billion. It then fell in 2019 to 5 billion, and then it has really fallen quite a lot in the current year year down to 2.9 billion. If we scroll down and take a look at their net income or profit if you like you can see back in 2016 that was 4.1 billion, 2017 just over 4 billion, 2018 was a better year for them as it was in the other metrics we saw at 5 billion, 2019 it had fallen to 3.9 billion and in the current year it's really collapsed to literally 456 million. It really shows the effect the pandemic has had on Wall Green Boots Alliance. Let's now take a look at the same metrics for CVS Health. Their revenues, their total revenues in 2015, their revenues are absolutely humongous there. 153 billion in 2016 that increased to 177 billion and in 2017 increased again to 184 billion increased again in 2018 increased again in 2019 and it's on course to increase again in the current 12 months which is obviously good the operating income you can see there goes from 9.6 billion in 2015, 10.5 billion in 2016, 9.7 billion in 2017, 10 billion in 2018, 10.8 billion in 2019 and has increased to 14 billion in the current trailing 12 months which is obviously a very nice picture to see there. Now let's look at the net income. So on the net income side of things, profit if you like, you can see 2015 5.2 billion increasing slightly to 5.3 billion in 2016. That increased again in 2017 to 6.2 billion. Then the they made the loss in 2018 but bear in mind that that's the year where they acquired Atna so obviously you would expect them to be able to offset the cost of that and that's probably the explanation for that so I'm not really holding that against them then in 2019 we've got 6.6 billion so slight increase mainly stable though and then the current 12 months it's increased to 7.9 billion given their best year in this time period which is obviously a very good thing from our point of view so this round really is a clear win for CVS it had consistent growth, didn't really falter on the income statement side of things, whereas Walgreens Boots Alliance, it had an up and a down, and obviously in the current year, in 2020, it's really suffered much more than CVS has, which has continued its onward and upwards growth streak. So now let's review the dividend safety side of things. So this is Walgreens Boots Alliance. If we look at the revenue per share, there you can see in 2016 it was $108 and that increased in 2017, increased again in 2018, increased again in 2019 and again in 2020. So that's a good sign. The earnings per share there you can see that has been up and down but currently is very low. So it's it's gone from $3.85, $3.85 per share in 2016. It fell in 2017 to $3.80 per share. Had a good year in 2018 at $5.07 per share fell a little bit in 2019 to $4.32 per share and has collapsed in 2020 at just $0.52 cents per share. Now the key thing to note is if you look at the row below that where it says dividend per share, you can see the dividend per share is actually higher in 2020 than the earnings per share, which is obviously a problem and that explains the payout ratio on the row below where the payout ratio is obviously bigger, 383% 
payout ratio in 2020. Whereas if you look in previous years, it had a nice payout ratio of 37.46 or 39. So it was a lot lower, much more sensible payout ratio. However, it's interesting to look at the free cash flow per share because the free cash flow per share is what's really required for paying those dividends. And if you look, the free cash flow per share was $6 per share in 2016, $5.50 per share in 2017, increased to $6.96 per share in 2018, which is obviously a very good year for them. In 2019, it fell down to $4.22 per share. But in 2020, it was increased to $4.67 per share, which is sufficient to cover the dividend. So what I'm saying here is I don't expect this dividend to be suspended anytime soon. But of course, the earnings per share is not a good sign being so low. If we take a look at CVS, CVS has revenue per share of $137.11 in 2015, and that increases year on year, including in the current trailing 12 months, you have to bear in mind we don't have a 2020 result for CVS here, so we are, we're always looking at the trailing 12 months, but still you can see it has increased even in that time period, so we know 2020 isn't so bad in that respect. The earnings per share you can see there started in 2015 at $4.66 per share, increased in 2016, increased again in 2017, Unlike Walgreens, these guys had a bad year, it looks like, in 2018. But I actually suspect that that is as a direct result of the merger or purchase of Aetna. Uh, in 2019, they have a earnings per share of $5.10, and it's increased in the current year to $6.08. The dividends, however, if you look, they stopped increasing them in 2017, but there's plenty of coverage from the earnings per share. If you look at that row there, where it says dividends per share, that increased from 2015 to 2016 increased again from 2016 to 2017 and then has stayed the same but it's more than covered by the earnings per share the payout ratio is very healthy as you can see there and if we look at the free cash flow per share we can see again that's generally climbing and more than covers the dividends per share so we have to give the dividend safety point to CVS it's got a lower payout ratio it had more coverage from its free cash flow as well whereas as you could see in this recent year Walgreens Boost Alliance didn't look so safe. So now let's take a look at the assets versus the liabilities. So we can see in the left hand column there total assets and total liabilities for Walgreens Boots Alliance and you can see the assets versus liabilities has a ratio of 1.37. If you don't know already over one is considered good so that's fine it's got more assets than it has liabilities so that's what we're looking for there so that's a good score. CVS marginally better at 1.4 there you can see. Now the current assets versus current liabilities so these the assets and liabilities coming due in the next 12 months, you can see that Walgreens Boots Alliance score asset or current assets versus current liabilities ratio is 0.66, whereas CVS's current assets versus current liability ratio is 0.99, which is much better. You're looking really for that to be above one. 0.99 is almost one. It's clearly a lot better than 0.66. So that's a win to CVS for current for sure. So there's how score there for assets versus liabilities because it was so close on the overall assets versus liabilities. I'm going to give that one all, so one to WBA and one to CVS. But for the current assets versus current liabilities, CVS is a clear winner. It clearly has a much better current assets versus current liabilities ratio there. Okay, we're going to have a look now at the balance sheet for Walgreens Boots Alliance. The first thing I want to look at here is the total cash and short-term investments. We're looking for an increasing trend and that's not what I'm seeing there at all. So you can see in 2016, they add 9.8 billion. That fell to 3.3 billion and then fell again in 2018 to 785 million. It increased in 2019, which is nice to see, to just over a billion. But in 2020, it's halved to 516 billion, which is obviously not what we're hoping to see when looking at a balance sheet. Next, let's take a look at the total current assets. So again, we'd be hoping to see a climbing trend and we've gone in 2016 from 25 billion all the way down to 18 billion in the current trailing 12 months, the current year 2020. I can see in 2019 it has increased over what it was in 2018 where it was 17.8 billion so that's good that little increase there but for the three years from 2016 to 2018 you can see it was declining. It then increased in 2019 which is good and then 2020 it's stable but it has fallen 700 million which isn't an insignificant sum. If we look at the total assets there we can see they've gone from 72 billion in 2016, declined to 66 billion 
billion in 2017, went up a little bit in 2018 to 68 billion, down in 2019 to 67 billion, and it's good to see they've increased by 20 billion in 2020. So they've ended at 87 billion. So that's, I make that about 15 billion more than they were in 2016. So now let's look at the total liabilities. So the total liabilities there in 2016 was 42 billion, and now they're 66 billion, which is 22 billion more. So that tells me that their assets to liabilities ratio is getting worse, not better, which is not a good sign. Let's now have a little look at the stockholders and total equity. So total common equity there we can see has gone from 29 billion down to 20 billion between 2016 and 2020. And the total equity, so that's under where it says stockholders equity, has gone from 30 billion down to 21 billion. And you can see that was falling pretty much year on year, 30 billion, then 28 billion, then 26 billion, and so on, all the way down until it got to 21 billion in the current year. So that's not exactly what we want to see. Now let's look at the balance sheet for CVS Health. So we look at the same things here. So total cash and short-term investments. And we can see in 2015, it was 2.5 billion. 2016, 3.4 billion. 2017, it dipped down to 1.8 billion. But then in 2018, it increased to 6.5 billion. 2019, it's increased again to 8 billion. 2020, current report, it's up to 12 billion. So that's a much prettier picture there. If we look now for the total current assets. So in 2020, 15 that was 29 billion and we can see that's increased pretty much year on year and to the current year it's 59 billion so that's really good to see that if we look at the total assets row there we can see in 2015 that was 92 billion increasing to 94 billion in 2016 increased again in 2017 increased again in 2018 which if you remember that's the year they merged with atna which is about a 69 billion dollar merger deal so that's what's happened there the 2019 was even higher it's gone up to 222 billion and then on the last report is 232 billion. So that's really good to see that growing like that. So if we look now at the total liabilities in 2015, they were 55 billion and they have also increased year on year, which isn't really what you want to see. But then in relation to how the assets were growing, that seems to be a reasonable amount. Let me just double check that. Actually, the liabilities are growing faster than the assets, which isn't really what you want to see. So let's look at the equity and the stockholder equity there. So the equity, now we're looking for this to be increased so the equity, the total common equity in 2015 was 37 billion and by the last report it was 68 billion. So that's fantastic news. And if you look at the total equity under stockholders equity there, that's gone from 37 billion and it's increased to 69 billion, which is a big jump. And that is absolutely fabulous news. That's what we want to see. So we're going to give the balance sheet to CVS. Yeah. So for balance sheet, we've got a clear winner there. CVS wins due to its increase in assets and increase in equity whilst Walgreens Boots Alliance has been declining in that respect. So that's another clear win to CVS for that round. So here's the summary for the dividend for Walgreens Boots Alliance. As you can see there, the payout ratio they're claiming now is 38.79%. I found that interesting when it was 300 and something percent earlier, but I suspect this 38.79 is from the free cash flow, which as I said, when we reviewed that earlier, had plenty of coverage, so that's fine. The dividend yield, 4.98%. The annual payout rate, $1.87. There's a five-year growth rate of 6.58% and it's 43 years of consecutive dividend growth, which is obviously phenomenal, making them a dividend aristocrat. If we look at their chart, you can see here they have been increasing dividends basically forever. <laughs> so it's increased, that really is a thing of beauty. It just increases every year they increase the dividend. So every year the dividend has been increased. Even in 2020, you can see there, they increased it in August. So now let's take a look at CVS. So CVS, we've got a 3.01% dividend yield, which is a $2 annual payout, 26.91% payout ratio, which as we said was slightly better. Now it's claiming a five five-year growth rate of 12.7% and a dividend growth of zero years. And we know this already from earlier when we saw that they'd stopped increasing dividends in 2017. And you can see that they were increasing their dividends right up until 2017. And then they stopped and it's just stayed static ever since then. But the reason it's got a high growth rate is because the distance from here to the 2015 figure here is, is higher. And that's why it wins on the dividend growth rate. So for dividend growth rate, we have to give that to CVS because it was that bit higher, despite the fact it has been flat for the last 
three years. So you do have to bear that in mind. At this point, I could have really given this either way to be completely fair, but the growth from 2015 to 2020 was high for CVS. That's what I, the, the metric I always take in my other comparisons. So to keep this video in keeping with my other videos, that's what I've done in this case as well. But obviously we could have very easily given this one all simply because it's been flat since 2017. So, you know, they, they may or may not be intending to increase it. Whereas Walgreens Boots Alliance is a dividend aristocrat. It's been increasing dividend, as you can see, 43 years. So you've got 43 years of consecutive growth. So that's why Walgreens Boots Alliance takes the other point rather than CVS. So I thought that was only fair that we give that one one all. Let's have a look at the analyst forecast now. So the analyst forecast for Walgreens Boots Alliance, as you can see there, they're predicting a 3.25% upside over the next 12 months. On the 10 analysts ratings, eight of them have it as a hold and two of them have it as a sell. You've got a predicted upside of $42 per share. Bear in mind the current share price is $37.53 per share. You've got the average prediction of $38.75 per share. This is in 12 months time. Or you've got a predicted low of $33 per share, which would obviously be a loss. So overall, the analyst are basing that one as a hold. CVS Health, their analysts have actually got this as a strong buy. Out of the nine analysts, seven of them are, seven analysts have this as a buy, two of them have, the, have it as a hold. You can see there there's a 25.46% upside, $83.29 is the average predicted price from the analysts with a potential high of $101 per share and a low of $61 per share. Bear in mind the current share price is $66.39 per share. So that round very clearly goes to CVS, leaving us with our final score of WBA 5, CVS 8. So we have a pretty clear winner there. So would I be interested in investing in either of these? The answer is no, not really. Pharmacies, I do think are due for disruption. I think Amazon is just one of many players that are coming in now. Amazon obviously being absolutely massive, but already here in the UK, I've even used myself online pharmacies that will just deliver things to your door. You can get repeat prescriptions. It's completely hassle-free. It comes quickly. It's actually cheaper than going to Boots or Walgreens if you're in America. I'm sure they have the same kind of things going on. And I suspect that all the lockdowns that have happened have actually taught people to shop online. Boots themselves said that 155% increase in their online sales, which is great, but that tells me other online pharmacies will have also had an increase in sales. And those people who've got use now and tried that and had a good experience and realized they can get their medication cheaper than they could by going into a pharmacy will, or a proportion of them will at least, continue to order online. They haven't got to worry about paying to park, they've got less hassle, they've not got to go to a pharmacy. So there is a whole big benefit to that. And then of course, we've got Amazon coming in as well. Mix into that, these guys, as I said earlier, it's not just about the pharmacy side of things, they've got the shop side of things as well. And we're seeing department stores struggle quite a lot and a lot of department stores have closed down recently. And I know, of course, we've had the pandemics causing that, but I do think that this high street has been on decline anyway in general. So it's not a, a sector that I'm particularly bullish in myself. I'd rather invest in the REITs and get the money from the rents because I think the shops are gonna keep changing. I'm not particularly confident in any shop unless I understand it absolutely brilliantly. And with these two companies, I would need to do a lot more research before I'd feel confident about investing in either. Obviously on the metrics we've seen today, CVS was the clear winner. If however, you're looking for a slightly higher dividend, then Walgreen Boots Alliance does offer that. So for the higher dividend, say go for Walgreen. But personally, I'm not interested in either of them, but that's my personal view. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. If you're investing in either of these or would invest in either of these, let me know which one and why. I always love to hear. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and bye-bye.